Okay. Welcome to the Mombasa Memorial Cathedral 40 Days of Lent devotional series. This is episode 34. My name is Winifred Gitao. I love the Lord Jesus as my savior. And I would like us to pray as we start. Our God and our Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your revelation to each one of us. I pray for listeners everywhere that you would give them understanding and insight that as we look into your word, Lord, you would bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our reading is from John chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 45 through to verse 56. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing? They asked. Here is this man performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Then one of them, named Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation, and not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God, to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Therefore, Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the people of Judea. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the wilderness, to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country to Jerusalem for their ceremonial cleansing before Passover. They kept looking for Jesus. And as they stood in the temple courts, they asked one another, what do you think? Isn't he coming to the festival at all? Our passage today focuses on what happened after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. A wonderful miracle performed openly and publicly that many people had seen. Those who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did for Lazarus, believed in Jesus. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. And then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. Jesus had opponents to his public ministry. They did not deny the reality of the miraculous signs. And it is true, there had been many other such signs. Jesus had raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. He had also raised the young man, the son of the widow of Nain. But the attitude of the leaders to these signs was not amazement and wonder and gratitude. They were resistant to the meaning of the miracles. Confronted point blank with Jesus' power, they refused to believe that he could be divine or that the God of Israel had anything to do with Jesus or his miracles. Their hearts were hardened. They rejected Jesus and plotted his murder. This was the tipping point. They were worried at this point in Jesus' ministry that if they did not stop Jesus, the Romans would discipline them. Rome had given the Jews at that time some freedom and rights of temple worship that they risked losing if Jesus became too popular. That is why Caiaphas said in verse 49 that you do not realize it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. This, we are told, is a prophetic statement. A very good explanation, by the way, of Jesus' death. Prophecy in scripture is the impartation of divinely revealed truth. But much as Caiaphas was God's high priest, he wasn't concerned with God's views. 
but rather with political expediency. He believed that one man, whether an innocent miracle worker or not, should die rather than put the Jewish nation in political jeopardy or make him lose his position of favor with Rome. As Caiaphas spoke these words, which even he had no idea of the spiritual significance of, his words were true in a way that he could not imagine. Yes, Jesus would die, not just for the Jewish nation, but also for the scattered children of God, you and I, to bring us together and make us one. Jesus was not going to die to remove political trouble from the Jewish nation. He was going to die for the sins of whosoever would believe in him. Praise God. This was already God's plan. If the high priest Caiaphas would have checked, he would have recognized in the scriptures that this matter had already been foretold. Jesus was coming to be the suffering servant, the savior of the world. Had Caiaphas even listened to John the Baptist, he would have known that Jesus is the Lamb of God, come to take away the sins of the world. Instead, Caiaphas and his team were thinking politically and at their meeting that day, in verse 53, we are told from that day on, they plotted to take his life. There is a verse that says in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22, when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. It is a verse that reminds you and me, no matter what you may be facing, dear listener, no matter the threats, the pressure, the stress you are going through, you can trust in our sovereign God who is in full control of the plan he has for your life. A plan for good, not for evil, to prosper and not to harm you, dear believer. Be sure that everything will fall into its place at the perfect time, at the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Jesus knew that he was the true Passover lamb of God, come to take away the sin of the world. The Pharisees and chief priests would eventually have their way and have him put to death, but he was not going to die in their time or under their power or under their decision. He would die at God's appointed time. And on that day, he would willingly, deliberately, silently, like a lamb led to the slaughter, lay his life down for you and for me. Until that day, verse 54 tells us, therefore Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the people of Judea. Jesus withdrew. He did not act imprudently. He followed God's directed timetable. Verse 56 tells us, they kept looking for Jesus. And as they stood in the temple courts, they asked one another, what do you think? Isn't he coming to the festival at all? Jesus would come, but he would come on his terms. He withdrew until the right time. You and I know that Jesus did die on that Good Friday at God's appointed time. We can trust God, you can trust God to order your steps, to protect you, to deliver you from those enemies who would plot and scheme against us. God knows the plans he has for you. Pray that his plans and his purpose be fulfilled in your life. But also don't expose yourself to the enemy. Instead, hide in the shadow of his wings. Take refuge in God Almighty. He is a strong tower, a refuge to all those who trust in him. Be wise, be shrewd, and may God bless you.
and fulfill his plans and purposes for your life. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that at the right time, you, God, will make your plans and your purposes for our lives happen. I pray for listeners everywhere that they would trust in you, that they would hide themselves in you, that they would take refuge in you, our strong tower. Father, I pray for your protection over your people. Bless them, Lord, and may your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen.